Welcome to Hartman Math. Before we get to our geometric concepts, let's review our arithmetic concepts and sequences and series. Through this warm up, go ahead and pause here until you work through our three problems. Play when you're ready. All right, number one, looking for a 2 sub n formula. A sub n is equal to first term plus n minus 1, so 199 times d, and we get 1,389. Number 2 is going to be an arithmetic partial sum. We know that because our a sub n is a linear expression. It's like mx plus b. So if we start our count at 1 and stop at 36, we're adding up 36 terms. So s sub 36 is equal to, we substitute in a 1, we get the first term. If we substitute in 36, we get the last term. Sum turns out to be 558. And then number 3, you're going up by 5 in terms of the terms. So, we know it's arithmetic. We just don't know how many terms there are. We've got to find that first. So to find n, we're going to use a sub n in reference to the 309 to find its position. So 309 is equal to first term plus unknown n minus 1 times the common difference. If you solve that out, you get n equals 63. This is the 63rd term. We're adding up 63 terms. So s sub 63 is equal to 63 divided by 2 times first plus last. And we get our sum 9,702. This is lesson 9.3, geometric sequences and series. So geometric, similar to our previous lesson, but what's happening to go from term to term is we are multiplying by a constant r. And that r is referred to as the common ratio. To find the common ratio, take any term and divide by the one that precedes it. So take the third term, divide by the second term. Take the 100th term, divide by the 99th term. It does not work in the other direction. You will not get the ratio. You will get its reciprocal, which is not the same thing. The formula in terms of a sequence, the nth term is the first term times the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. We can see how that is happening. So the first term is a sub 1. The second term would be that times r third term would be that times r, and the next term would be that times r, as that's our pattern to continually multiply by r. So you can see it's a sub 1 times r, where the exponent is 1 less than its position n. So find the formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence whose common ratio is negative 3, and whose first term is 5. That should be pretty easy. We know the two things that we need to know, a sub 1 and the r. So there's our formula, a sub n equals 5 times negative 3 to the power of n minus 1. The parentheses is very necessary, Use, uh, can be useful at all times, but especially since our r is negative, we need to have parentheses there. No, you are not allowed to multiply these two things together. It doesn't simplify that way. They do not have the same exponent. Checkpoint. Pause here as you find the 13th term of the geometric sequence. Again, don't just work backwards and write it out. Use algebra. So here's our formula. The sixth term we know, so we'll use that to find the unknown a sub 1. So the sixth term is the first term times the common ratio to the power of 6 minus 1, or 5. That will equal negative 4. If we take negative 2 to the fifth power uh, and divide that on both sides, we're going to get our a sub 1, which is either the decimal 0 0.125 or the fraction 1 8. They are equivalent. a sub 13, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can go back to the beginning, a sub 1 times r to the uh, n minus 1. The other way we could do it is knowing that we have the sixth term and the common ratio. Connect the sixth term to the thirteenth term. It's seven more terms. So to multiply this by 
r to the seventh power can also get you to the same place. Example number four, eighth term is given, the fifth term is given. We don't know the first term. We don't know the common ratio. So we're going to have to find that. So we're going to set up equations. Okay, so we can set up a system, or we can try to relate the terms to each other. The eighth term would be the fifth term times three more r's, or r cubed. And we know these values. We just don't know the r. So if we then divide by 648, reduce it, and then take the cube root on both sides, we're going to find out that r is one-third. We then substitute that into one of the two equations. I do prefer the one with the lower position. a sub 1 times r to the 5 minus 1, if we're talking about the fifth term of 648. A couple ways we could do it. We could divide both sides by this number really crazy about dividing by the fraction and the issues that creates, but we can multiply by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of one-third to the fourth power is three to the fourth power. So if we just multiply both sides by three to the fourth power, we get the first term. We're looking for the formula, so we definitely needed a sub one. a sub one times r to the n minus one. If we're trying to find the sum, partial sum, of a finite geometric sequence, so we're adding up the first n terms from here all the way to there, the formula is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. There's different ways you can manipulate the formula. I like to have a sub 1 be on top, and then just have parentheses here and parentheses on the bottom. Parentheses on the bottom wouldn't be required if you're using your calculator and trying to divide by, we want to divide by a quantity. So parentheses around here, parentheses here. Uh, Evariste de Galois is a French mathematician uh, from the 1800s. Doesn't have anything to do with this, but he's my favorite mathematician. And if you want to know why, just look him up. So find the sum. You see the sigma notation indicating we're going to find a sum. And the way that we would know this is geometric is if we have an exponential expression. Some number times a base to the power of n or n minus 1. It really wouldn't matter there. If it's an exponential expression, we know it's going to be geometric. So whatever's being raised to the power, that's your r value. We need to know a sub 1. We need to know r. We need to know n. If we're starting our count at 1 and ending at 5, we're doing s sub 5. To find out the first term, since our lower limit is 1, and substitute in a 1. So 54 times 1 third to the first power, 1 third to the first power is 1 third, Multiplied by 54, you get negative 18. So here's the a sub 1. 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. Now here's where you've got to be very careful. A lot of people want to do and change this and go minus, minus. That just becomes plus. And that's going to depend on the exponent. So I would suggest that you do not do that. Here, it's fine have no exponents, this is the same thing as 1 plus a third. Here I'd be careful. Okay. I think it's going to work on this one. If that was a 6, it would not work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do order of operations. We're going to raise this it's in brackets and in parentheses. We're going to raise this to the power. So negative 1 third to the fifth power. If I raise a negative to an odd power, I'm going to get a negative. I need to raise numerator and denominator to the fifth power. When I do that, this is going to turn into 1 minus negative 1 over 243. 
And then that becomes, in this case, it did turn into plus, but watch out, it's not always. 243 over 243 plus 1 over 243. There we go. So negative 18 times this. And then instead of dividing by a fraction 4 thirds, multiplied by the reciprocal instead. We're going to get some canceling. 4 evenly divides into 244. 3 evenly divides into 243. And when you reduce it all the way, you get negative 122 over 9. All right, let's try part B. Sigma 3 times negative 2 to the power of n minus 1. So we're doing s sub 10. A sub 1, the first term, we're going to substitute in a 1. Negative 2 to the power of 0 is 1, times 3 is 3. So that's going to go in this spot. 1 minus negative 2 to the 10th power, all divided by 1 minus negative 2. So if you had gone plus plus here, absolutely going to get it wrong because negative 2 to the 10th power is a positive number. We'll do 1 minus that positive number and get a negative number divided by 3. When you do that, you're going to get negative 1,023. Example 6, let's find the sum of this geometric sequence. It's actually good. Uh, so we're finding a, a geometric series. You can see that we're multiplied by 3, multiplied by 3 is the pattern. That's how we know it's geometric. Now what we do not know is the n. So again, to find the n, we're going to use the a sub n geometric formula where this is uh, the a sub n that we're interested in. We want to know the n that belongs to that. So let's set that up. 1458 is equal to a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Let's solve for n. Let's divide both sides by 2. Now we have some options. We can do some guess and check, or if we go back to chapter three, we can do this as a log equation. So rewrite this in terms of logs by moving the base. n minus one drops down, three moves to the other side, log base three of 729. You can do that on your calculator. If you can't type it in directly, you can always use the change of base formula log 729 divided by log 3. And that's going to give you 6. Now remember, it's n minus 1 equals 6. Add 1 to both sides, we get 7. So we're talking about s sub 7. We should know the rest of it. It should be a lot easier. Since our r is positive, it's going to be easier for our calculation purposes. So we'll do s sub 7, 2 times 1 minus 3 to the 7th, divided by 1 minus 3, should probably be able to type it in just like that and get 2,186. Now, unlike arithmetic sums, for geometric, sometimes we can find the sum of an infinite geometric. Sometimes. That was never true for arithmetic. For geometric, it's true when this condition is met. If the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1, we can find the sum of the infinite geometric series. Okay. And the way it works is, uh, here's the formula, it's just a sub 1 divided by 1 minus r. Because if we look back at the previous formula for regular geometric series, which is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r, if we look at what's happening towards infinity, where we get very, very, very large values of n, any r that fits this description, like 0.7 or something like that, if we raise it to a really, really big exponent of n, it becomes really close to zero. And the bigger the n, the closer it becomes zero, so that part essentially disappears. So the 1 minus r to the n just becomes 1. So we're talking about a sub 1 times 1 divided by 1 minus r. So there's the formula for talking about infinite geometric. Find the sum. How do we know it's infinite? The 
upper limit in the sigma is in the infinity symbol. We know it's geometric because it looks as an exponential expression. And this should work because here's our r. And the absolute value of that r value is less than 1. So we can get a sum here. So we're going to do a sub 1. So we'll substitute in a 1. We're going to get uh, exponent of 0. 5 7 to the power of 0 is 1 times 6 is 6. 6 divided by 1 minus 5 7 calculate that, simplify 2 7, 6 divided by 2 7, probably easier to, instead of dividing by 2 7, to multiply by the reciprocal, 6 times 7 over 2 is 42 divided by 2, 21, 21 is our sum. Checkpoint, go ahead and pause here, work it out, find the sum, and play when you're ready. Did you get negative 6? It doesn't sound right. If we were to explore the, what the series looks like, you substitute in a 1, you're going to get 6. Substitute in a 2, you're going to get 12. Substitute in a 3, you're going to get 24. So 6 plus 12 plus 24 plus keep going. How could that have a sum of negative 6? It doesn't make sense. The reason it doesn't make sense this does not have a sum. R value is 2. The absolute value of that is 2. That's not less than 1. The formula only works when the R value qualifies. This one does not. So you could say it does not converge. There is no sum. And we're going to wrap up with finding the rational number. If we see a repeating decimal, can we come up with the fraction that generates that number? So here's how we're going to do it. In this one, there is a repeating part and a non-repeating part. So we're going to kind of separate it into those things right here. We've got the 1.5, and we've got the 0 0.023, and so on. So we're going to separate into those parts. We've got the 1.5, and then the repeating part, 0 0.023, 0 0.00023, and so on. So we can find a fraction for that pretty easily. 1.5 is 1 and 5 tenths, so 15 tenths, 3 halves. And then this part is going to generate an infinite geometric series. So look at this part. A sub 1 is right there times r, well, if you want to know what r is, take one of the terms, divide by the one in front of it. You're going to see that r is 0 0.01. So a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. And dot, dot, dot. So it's infinite. So now that we've got it set up and we see the parts, we can use our formula for infinite geometric series to calculate this. We're going to do a sub 1 divided by 1 minus r. So our denominator is going to come out to be 0.99. I think we should do decimal busting on that. So there's three decimal places here and two down here. The greater number is 3. So we're going to slide the decimal three places to the right. In a sense, we're multiplying by 1,000 if we're thinking in terms of place values. So down here at 0.99, we're going to slide it 3 to the right. And then one more, there's going to create a gap there. We're going to need to fill in a 0, so it's 990. So we change that into 23 over 990. We need to have a common denominator here. See how many times 2 goes into uh, 990. I think it's uh, 495, so multiply the 3 by 495. Add these together and then reduce the fraction. 754 divided by 495. I think that's as far as we can go. If we want to check it, do that division on your calculator. I think you're going to see that pattern emerge. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.